Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob. Today, I want to talk to you about is where we're potentially going in 2023. Just want to take a look at uh, just some simple data points. Uh, and I got to tell you, uh, the first month that's coming up, uh, January 2023, is not looking good. However, moving forward, I think we've got a lot of ways to go. Uh, also, we'll take a look at uh, some active addresses and how there are some different products that are actually building in this bear market. And finally, I want to talk to you about a call I took on a crypto product that we've covered here on the show and where things are going as far as globally in the crypto market in 2023 and 2024. And it really does have to do with the tokenization of, of uh, securities and security assets. And this was, it just blew me away about what's happening behind the scenes that nobody knows about because nobody has any idea what's coming. So first things first, let's take a look at uh, what's going to happen potentially in 2023. This was a chart uh, put out by Rect Capital. I link their uh, uh, Twitter account in the description. You can check it out. And again, I'm a big believer in four-year cycles. So again, 2012 was a halving. 2013 was an all-time high. 2014 and 15 is a dip and a reset. 2016, we had a Bitcoin halving. 2017, all-time high. 18, 19 dip reset. And then just 2020, we had a halving again. We had an all-time high in 2021. We're going through a major dip and a reset, uh, which will happen in 2023. Those are the four-year cycles. But the way that Wrecked Capital uh, took a little uh, difference, different look at it was instead of starting with number one, which would be what I would say number one the first time, which would be the first halving. They're, they're starting everything at the all-time high after the first halving. And they said, just take a look at this. So in 2013, this number one here, that was the all-time high. Then we have what I call as a dip in 2013. And then 2014, uh, we have a reset. And that is, uh, even though we see it's, uh, you know, the, the full year after the all-time high is bad, the reset year is actually not too bad. And then we go into a halving in 2016, 2017 all-time high, a dip and a reset. And of course, a halving in 2020, we're looking pretty good. 2021, 2021, we had an all-time high. And see, look at that wick going all the way up there to almost $70,000. And the number two here is what I say is the dip or the year afterwards. So if we just take a look at three, usually two years after the all-time high, three over here, three over here, is actually a pretty good green year. Then going into, uh, of course, uh, the next all-time high. One thing to note here is this. Diminishing returns are definitely in play. You can see here the number one in 2013. That's a pretty big candle. And 2017, still a big candle, but not as much. And then look at 2020, or 2021, excuse me. Not too much action, but it still went to 70,000. So again, I think in 2023, we could see some, some pretty good uh, reversals. However, if we take a look, this is from Ben's website in the Cryptoverse, and we take a look here at the monthly return tables, just look at January for all the years. And you can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, green months, and then five red months. And most importantly, the month or the two months after the all-time high, remember the all-time was 2013, two months afterwards, January was a pretty awful month, negative 31%. And 2017, all-time high, two years after that, it was still a red month, negative 7%. And then in 2021, two years after that, I still think January is going to be a pretty crummy month. Moving into uh, maybe February, might see a better month, and then March. But I still think 2023 can be good. It just depends on how good it can be and how long it's going to take. Again, there's a lot of macro factors. We're going to start to see, I mean, even if the Fed pivots, you're still going to have months after that because they probably broke something. There's still going to be supply chain issues. There's still going to be inflation. There's still going to be all this talk about the wars and things that are going on. So the macro discussion, I think, is still going to be pretty awful. But I see that we're going in the right direction moving forward. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And I will just say this. Just remember, and we talked about this before many times, I still think we can go down even farther. So again, if we take a look at the different time frames, uh, usually we fall about 84 to 85%, and that would put us at a 10K Bitcoin. Can that happen in January? Maybe. That's what we got. So again, let me know what you think about that. Now let's move on to our next piece, active addresses. 
And this is important to take a look at to see like who is growing, who is doing good things. But also it's, it's good to note that on-chain metrics can kind of be a little funny. So this is from, that uh, was a tweet by Web3 Market Insights. Go ahead and follow him, link in the description. But he takes a look at Delhi Active Address as a polygon. He said, wow, look at that. Delhi Active Addresses is around 1 million in the last 30 days. You can see this is actually broken down by days. Taking a look here from November all the way to uh, December. And of course, this is uh, day by day by day. It's looking pretty, pretty positive. Uh, what's happening here. However, when I take a look at this, I'm like, wow, that's pretty awesome. And then let me see just how that is on the website. This is Nansen. And you can just see that uh, over the last, uh, gosh, what is this, over a year? No, this is all of it since uh, the inception of Polygon. You can see the active addresses. It's pretty good, but not as much as it was back in September. We had almost uh, 1.6 million here. And of course, during its uh, all-time high in October, you know, 1.5 uh, million, but we're still looking pretty good. And I thought to myself, well, how is that for Bitcoin? Take a look at Glassnode, uh, Bitcoin active addresses. We can see right here, you're looking at almost a million. So you're telling me that Polygon, however they defined it here, uh, they've got a lot of active addresses, that, which is good. However, if I just take a look at Glassnode and pull up Polygon, a much different story. Glassnode over here will say, hey, this is, you've got 5,000 active addresses. You've got 7,488 addresses. And the way they define it is this, the number of unique addresses that were active in the network, either as a sender or receiver, only addresses that were active and successful transactions are counted. So if we take a look over here, what do they define that as? And then it's just, at, just interaction and the number of times events were broadcast by the specific entities or smart contracts or how things were moved about. So again, for this one with Nansen, just take it with a grain of salt for all this on-chain data. You can parse this up and make it look awesome or make it look crappy, just depends. But take it with a grain of salt because there's different ways that metrics will show you different things. Not to take away from Polygon. I own Polygon. I want it to work really well. But uh, this is not a moon boy channel. And uh, that is just the data that we see. Anyhow, that's what we got. And then lastly, let's finish up with some positive news. Now, I didn't, I thought it was interesting, but I didn't really put two and two together. Uh, this is Larry Fink. And he is talking at uh, some summit and he's talking, and Larry Fink is the CEO of BlackRock, 10 trillion asset center management. And he's talking about how big tokenization of security is gonna be, securities being stocks. And I just kind of, brush it off like that's cute that's adorable but then i was reached out by these guys from uh, arcton and uh, i talked talk to francesco and marins marins is is a uh, securities lawyer in switzerland uh, francesco he is a uh, blockchain developer and uh, they talked about how yeah they said we we're also looking because of the uh, token securities here in switzerland that is our our main business and they explained to me what a security token actually was. I'm like, that's great, fine, sounds good. And then I just talked to somebody yesterday, friend of the show, I can't tell you what the project is, but we talked, it was supposed to be a, a 15 minute conversation, it was an hour and a half. And what he told me, he said, look, we've been reached out by numerous institutions and entities globally, not just America. And what they want us to do is they want to build on top of our project to offer uh, tokens, securities to be tokenized so their customers can have access. And I said, what, what is the whole point of that? They said, because it's just, it's just cheaper, easier and faster and it cuts out the middleman, which is what we've been talking about for so long. He goes, so what they're going to be doing, and I'll be talking about this later when I can tell you more, but what they want to be doing is to service industries like with pick day i don't i have no idea what this is this is asset management wealth management they've got 700 billion asset center management and they told me a bunch of different other names that are out there and they want to build on top of us and i can guarantee this isn't the only crypto platform what they're doing and uh he said we're going to be doing uh, money license and uh different different things which will essentially make them a bank moving forward globally I can't get into the, the details of it yet, 
but uh, look for that in Q2, Q3. And he said, and what he told me, what he said was, this is the future. This is where things are going. These are the things that are happening for real world assets to be tokenized. And he goes, and it'll be built on multiple solutions, multiple layer ones. And uh, so the whole narrative from here, which was, well, Larry and BlackRock, they'll just build their own blockchain. I told you, no, they won't. They may, but I don't think it's, it's very wise. We took a look at how many businesses Facebook has acquired, even though they could definitely just build their own. It's just feaster, faster, cheaper, easier to build it on the, on, on the platform, use another platform and just go that route. So I'm excited for 2023. And I think this could be the new paradigm shift people are talking about. Anyhow, I'll let you know about that when I get more information and can talk about it, but that's what's happening. Then lastly, just let you know um, the Sweatcoin uh, January challenge. I want everybody to get in shape or as, as best a shape as they can. The best way to start with doing that is just walking. Sweatcoin is, of course, I'm biased on this channel. I have I own a bunch of sweat coins myself, but the app itself is free to use, free to download, and you get free uh, crypto, which is uh, uh, the sweat coin app. I reached out to all the people that I knew, and here's what we're giving away. We're giving away over 5,000 sweat coins. We're giving away a Ledger Nano X. We're giving away a lifetime membership to Token Metrics, 10 coin Ledger premium memberships. We're giving away two Arculuses. We're giving away meld tokens, meld bank managers. We're giving away three six month premium memberships in the Cryptoverse, 30 shield folios, uh, premium membership of Tencent, ladies, uh, epic art, which is crypto physical art. And of course some Yetis from iTrust Capital and some pens. And it's all gonna happen within this, this month. So there's a link in the description. All I want you to do is just, just download the app now, start walking. Top 30 people are gonna win these things. And I'll explain uh, on January 1st exactly how that works. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. All things to talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.